It was good. Um, so first up, um, it's not a new product. It's just a back in stock, back which is just stock. as important. Uh, we got the Microbit bundles. Microbit V2 Go bundles. We got a shipment of them. We, I think we still have some in stock. We do. We do have a limit of five per customer because um, Educator has been waiting for these for a really long time. A lot of them switch over circuit uh, playgrounds, but that's okay. We have these if you want them. Pick them up. Next up. Okay, we've got two of these ultra skinny uh, UTP cables. Um, so, you know, these will work for Cat5 use with Ethernet, like gigabit Ethernet or 100 megabit Ethernet. But um, I'd also know people tend to use these RJ45 connectors for uh, DIY projects when they have to, like, you know, get eight NeoPixel signals over from one side to the other. And so, um, wanted to have these ultra skinny cables. Uh, you know, of course, the connectors are still kind of chunky, but the cables themselves are only um, three millimeters. And if you're okay with, not having you know full metal shielding on um, the cable jacket then um, these will fit around and curve through your project much more easily uh, so we have these in both uh, a one meter and one foot length okay next up next up i get some old projects with an uh, rs232 connector on them uh, we now have an ftdi cable that has usb-c on one end and uh, RS-232 on the other. Inside is an FTDI FT-232 RL cable plus a um, level shifter converter slash uh, charge pump that will take the five volt signal and convert it to plus minus 10 volts. Um, some lower cost cables don't give you the full plus or minus. They only go from like zero to 10 and it'll work sometimes, but this one actually goes from negative at least six to positive at least six. Um, it's also using the FTVI chipset, which is extremely reliable um, and high quality. It's got drivers for every operating system. Um, so if you're trying to connect to some old equipment or maybe you just want uh, to get your Palm Pilot up and running again with your um, you know, M1 MacBook Pro, uh, this cable will definitely do the job. I'm gonna tell everyone this is the new uh, lightning cable from Apple. Yeah. I'm gonna just like I'm gonna. Uh, it's called drop lifting. I'm gonna put this in the Apple Store. Yeah. And just say like we have to get a we have to get a white one. New yeah new um, new lightning cable. Okay next up. Okay, next up uh, by request JP wanted us to get some good looking knobs. Yeah, so we uh, got so some good looking. A few different knobs. colors, and this is just the top view. Top. So we got gold is best. Gold is best. Cherry red. Yeah. Um, blue steel. Silver Fox. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. Yeah. And Adafruit Black. Uh, so five colors. These are uh, machined, uh, solid chunk, anodized aluminum, knurled knobs. Um, they feel great. They're 20 millimeters wide. I'll show them on the overhead. Uh, by 15 millimeters tall. Um, they have a set screw if you go to the next image. Just yeah, to I was going to say, that's kind of yeah, like the screw. best part of these. Yeah, so the reason that it's great that they have a set screw is that the inside, as you go to the image here um, the inside is a six millimeter uh, drilled out core with a set screw which means that you can use it with rotary encoders or potentiometers or really anything like that uses a six millimeter shaft which is kind of standard um, whether it's D T18 or round shaft and then um, you just use the set screw to set it uh, so it's kind of a universal potentiometer rotary encoder knob. I mean, these are great. You know, they're, these are sometimes using very nice, um, you know, guitar pedals or, or guitar mods or synthesizers, but I think they just are a very high quality knob and I like to have nice knobs. Sometimes just it, that finish really makes your project stand out. So I can show these on the overhead. Yeah, go for it. Okay. I'll keep showing these photos until so, you, you get there and you're there. Okay. Okay. So... Sorry, so it's gold, silver, blue, and then the red one. Okay, um, so yeah, these are, so now I can see the scale because you've got my uh, fingers yeah, in the you, way. Yeah, a human hand. Human hand, and then I also have a potentiometer. So this is like a T18 knob, um, so you can see here um, the set screw. Uh, so this fits in, you know, nicely. You adjust it the way you want. And then um, this is a two millimeter uh, hex wrench you just crank it down finger tight and then now uh, you've got a nice knob with an indicator 
Uh, this one has a black paint, but the rest one are are white paint, and they yeah. they look really cool and they're beautiful. Um, they're anodized, so they're they're durable, um, and they've come in these beautiful jewel tone colors. So thanks, JP, for recommending them. All right, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our Adafruit team, and everyone who helps make this thing go, is a new breakout, the PCF eighty five seventy four. Um, so this is a, a STEM QT breakout for an I squared C GPIO expander. Um, you know, if you've been watching our shows, we can't get the MCP 28, uh, nope. sorry, 23017 or 08 series GPIO expanders. I love them, but they're not available. So I thought I'd expand my, you know, outlook and find some alternatives. So the PCF 8574 is a low cost expander uh, from TI and it's available, which is the most important thing. It's got eight pins. Uh, you can control it over I squared C. Um, one nice thing about it is it has um, three address pins on the mm -hmm. back. You want this one? Yeah, on the back. So you can have up to eight of these connected. The default address is OX20 hex, but you can have eight. So that's like 64 total GPIO. Um, it's got STEM QT, so it's plug and play. Um, so what's interesting about this chip, I do want to mention because it took me like a few minutes to grok what's going on. Um, it's extremely simple. There's drivers for like, we wrote drivers for Arduino and CircuitPython, but honestly, it's a, such a common expander. Um, you're going to find drivers for, for almost any platform. Um, you basically read and write just eight bits directly to the I squared C address, and there's no specific direction pin. So what you're used to with most IO expanders is you have a direction and then you can also set pull-ups. Um, so you have the input and then the input, you know, can be high or low or the output high or low. Um, and then you can add pull-ups as well. So this chip doesn't do that. Instead, it, it actually has two modes. So each IO can either be an input with a very weak pull-up about 100K or an output that's syncing current. And what that means is that um, it basically can act as a bi-directional IO. If you want it to be an input, you turn it on with that weak pull-up and then you can, you know, by default it reads high and if the whatever signal is sent low, um, you read low. And uh, if it's floating, it reads high. Um, so if you have a button, for example, I'll show this on the overhead. So I, I have two IOs here because this is actually the, the most confusing is buttons and LEDs. Um, note that I didn't have a resistor with the LED because I'm just, um, I'm being cheap and, and fast here. Um, so the button goes between ground and the IO number one. Um, you cannot connect a button from an IO pin to high. There's no such thing as, the, as a pull down. There's only this light built in pull up. Um, but when I uh, press this button, it can detect that I'm shorting the input to ground. Um, and then what it'll do is the code running in Arduino on this cutie pie, reads that through I squared C and then writes P7 to be that output low. So if you want to read an input, you basically have a built-in pull up, light pull up. If you want to drive an LED, like something that's really syncing current, the LED has to be connected from positive, you know, uh, the, the anode to positive and then um, common cathode. So you ground the LED to turn it on. If you try to connect this LED from the output pin to ground, there's, there's no such thing as sourcing current. You can only sync current. Um, it only matters again with an LED. You can only connect it from high to the GPIO, not the other way around. And a button, you can only use that built-in light pull up. If you're using signal, like you're using this to uh, trigger a reset pin or um, you know, uh, can communicate with another, another digital circuit, um, that light pull up will always you know, signal a high voltage and um, turning it to an output low will signal low voltage. So as long as the input impedance of whatever digital circuit you connect it to is um, greater than 100K, which is you know, almost everything that does digital circuitry other than very old TTL logic, um, this will work just fine. It's just, it's just a bit of a funkiness. You can think of it basically as a um, open drain IO expander. That said, it works quite well as long as you're just aware of the, the button and LED um, situation, you know, the, the way you have to hook them up. Um, it's extremely fast because there's only one register uh, and, uh, you know, it works with a wide range of voltages and a wide, wide range of I squared C frequencies. And that's new products. And that is new products. 
new 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 new